Hi, Pastor Brian. How are you? I'm blessed just to hear your voice. How are you? I am blessed. First, I want to say thank you for taking the time out. I know you're in your travels. You have an itinerary that's out of this world. And I just want to thank you, first off, for taking the time to, after you landed, to still be on the show. So I just want to thank you so much for being on the show. And I just want to just give you a proper introduction. (laughs) Pardon me? All right. I said, I'm just honored to be with you. Thank you. And, and I just want to give you a proper introduction because, see, this is how I was first introduced to you when I, when I started watching your show. I know you as the slogan, I am a black man just trying to do the best he can. And you are the <laughs> founder and pastor <laughs> of Empowerment Temple in Baltimore, Maryland. And, I mean, it's a growing ministry. We're going to get into the ministry. And I want to say I have not been so excited about an interview since I started in radio 20 years ago. Wow. And since I sat down with Dr. Frederick Casey Price on last year, we just had a wonderful talk. And I tell you, it was such a blessing that he did the majority of the talking. So I was so blessed by that. And so I just want to just, just welcome you to the show. And, and we're just going to get right into the interview. First off, your ministry is doing some wonderful things. You have a um, this month prayer emphasis, it's emphasis on prayer, and you're praying without ceasing. You have some wonderful yeah. events going on. And you have something I've never heard of. This is my first time, an Internet Online Prayer Revival taking place next Wednesday. Tell us about that. Uh, it's going to be incredible. One of the things, uh, we're, we're moving to a technological age, and the church, regrettably, is still stuck in the Stone Age. Uh, and I think that a lot of people uh, that, who are saved and Christian and go to church use the Internet, but the church has not really grasped it. So what's going to happen on next Wednesday at 12 noon, uh, you don't even have to come to the church. You can watch from work or from home or from the dorm or from the military barrack. Email us your prayer request, and we're going to be praying for people live online uh, at mm-hmm. our website, www.empowermenttemple.org. It's going to be one hour of power, a prayer revival. I really just felt in my spirit that God is shifting the focus of the church away from uh, being event-driven uh, to being driven towards him. Uh, and I really just called our church to a season of centering, focus, solitude, meditation, reflection, and prayer. Amen. And then you have a prayer lock-in on Friday, September the 27th from a 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So they're going to be in the house just praying. And then you have yeah. a, a, a day of prayer or fasting on September the 26th. Tell us about your entire month of September you got going on to the 27th. <laughs> Yes, on that Friday night, uh, Pastor Mark Vereen from Richmond, Virginia, uh, is coming to lead us in all-night prayer. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we're going back to old school. We're uh, a new school church with an old school feel. Uh, and okay. so we're, we're really going back to the things that uh, our foreparents used to do in order to really hear from God and to touch heaven, uh, as it were. So I'm, I'm excited uh, about that. On uh, that Friday night from 10 p.m., until Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m., we're doing something that's probably new to the body of Christ. We're calling for a fast, but it's not a fast from food. We're calling for a fast from uh, technology. So we're asking people mm. uh, to fast from, uh, from text messaging, from Twitter, from MySpace, from Facebook, <laughs> uh, and use, it, use that time to really just hear from God. Uh, because a lot of people, food is not their issue. And the whole issue of fasting is to take away that was that which is convenient and comfortable, so that they might be recentered on Christ. Amen. Now you know a lot of people are going to be going through withdrawals like heroin. You know they have their cell phones. You know they got a Twitter. Uh, so you people are going to go through some withdrawals well, at this particular time. Well, I'm, 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 I'm pooky to crackhead when it comes to Twitter and Facebook and my iPhone. So it's, it's going to be a major sacrifice for me as well. Okay, man. Okay. Praise God. And what I really wanted to get into, uh, I know next month you have um, is your men's month, and then February you have a wonderful conference, and it's called, it's called When Love Knocks You Down Relationship right. Conference. Tell me what is that going to be about, When Love Knocks You Down? It is really about how to recover all and how to deal with it, not just uh, male-female relationships, but Anytime that you are in love with anybody, when that love is severed, it has an effect. Uh, one of the tributaries or the outlooks of that uh, is seeing how Kanye West, who has not taken the time to deal with the death and the loss of his mother, is acting out in different ways. Uh, it's not necessarily who you dated, went to the prom with, broke your heart, uh, but when you have an unfulfilled love relationship. Uh, just yesterday, Whitney Houston was on Oprah 
And she said, I had the money, had the cars, had the marriage, but didn't have the joy. Uh, and that there's so many people who are bleeding and who are suffering, are trying to figure out how do I recoup from the love relationships that have gone awry. So in February, I'm, I'm excited about what that's going to bring. Mm, that sounds like that's going to be really good. And, um, and I know that... Come. <laughs> Amen. Well, listen, we're going to pray with you with the Lord. Say, you might see me in Baltimore with my husband. <laughs> All right. Praise I'm going to look for you. Hey, Amen, because you have an awesome book. I am so excited about this book. I'm telling you, I've been so excited about this interview and just the title, World War Me. That, that, right. that right there got me. And then when you said how to win the battle that I lost. And first off, I want to commend you on writing this book and commend you on being so open in this book because the first paragraph, I like the fact that you hit the ground running in the first paragraph. And I just want to read something that you wrote in that first paragraph that really got me. You said, one of your mentors expressed to you, you only have two things in life, your image and your integrity. And then you said, regrettably, I only listened to half of what he said. I digested the part on image but discarded the part about integrity. Please tell us what you meant by that. Uh, what I said about that is I, I took on what is the trapping of what it means to be a Christian. So I, I had the look uh, of a pastor but didn't have the life of a pastor. Uh, and as a consequence, what the book is about is poor decisions and bad choices. And the poor decisions and the bad choices that I made in ministry after being saved, after having a successful, thriving uh, church, took me to a place where I almost lost my church. Uh, I lost my marriage, I lost my integrity, lost my character, and through the grace of God, I'm beginning to rebuild all of that again. I don't want to give the whole book away, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I went through the, such a harrowing experience where I had to learn that just because you have grace, it doesn't mean that's a loophole for consequences. And a lot of us believe that because you're blessed and highly favored and have grace, you won't have to deal with your bad and poor decisions, but in all actuality, you do. A a amen. Because when I, when I was just reading, you know, j just a little bit of it to talk to you about it, I mean, just how you yeah. describe it, you know, bad decisions and poor choices. And people forget, too, that uh, men of God, we, and men and women of God still have to pray. We all go through the same things that what we preach to our sheep about, but we've got to make sure that we don't become also a casualty, you know, of, of the war also. And that's why I was so thankful that um, when God moved on you to write this book to, to be open, because I know a lot of people are going to be delivered and set free from from this and when you uh, you describe landmines and sniper attacks sabotage all the war right. words to describe enemy activity but you say what if the enemy is you and what if you are your own worst enemy uh, that makes you I'm, I'm praying yeah I, I, I did really a sharing an impartation in, in our church on last night, and our emails were so overwhelming from around the country uh, from people who were blessed from me being transparent and sharing my testimony. I want to share uh, with your listeners that if they want to read an excerpt from the book, uh, they can go now to my website, jamalbryant.org. I'll read an excerpt, some highlights uh, about the book, uh, because as I said, it's, it's not about the rumors or the rhetoric. This is the real mm -hmm. story of how it really happened and how God has really blessed me. Amen. And, um, I'm, I'm, trust me, they're going to be blessed because I know the excerpt that I got, and you know, and I shared it with my husband. We were so blessed. Yeah. And one thing I love about you, you didn't blame it on the devil. You know, you didn't say, no. you know, the devil made me do it. You right. took responsi You took responsibility, and that's what people need to do, and that's what's going to help other people um, get delivered. And I believe it's going to help them stay delivered because you right. just talked about, you know, your self-discipline, selfishness, and greed. I'm, I'm leaving right. the devil out of it because we know we battle against three things, the world, the flesh, and the devil. So you put the devil out of it, the, you know, and the world out of it, it was your flesh. You said it was me. Right. So it's world war me. And so, right. and, I, and I thank God how you also, t t you, you put a quote in there. And tell me why you put this quote in there. You said the church is the only army that gets rid of its wounded soldiers. Yeah, well, I, I found out firsthand when I went through uh, my storm and my crisis, I went through the greatest Internet uh, exposure and attack that anybody has ever gone through uh, in the body of Christ. 
And when I went through it, uh, pastors started canceling me from preaching, uh, began to vilify me from their pulpit. But I can count on one hand how many preachers called me to pray for me. Uh, how many people said, you know, are you all right? Uh, what, what can I do to be there for you in this crisis? And it was almost uh, like a hellish glee to see somebody fall uh, and to see somebody uh, go through a, a trial. Uh, but if we're one family and we're in the, the soldier, uh, we're soldiers in the army of the Lord, then it's our responsibility. The U.S. Army has a theme, uh, leave nobody behind. And I wish the church would really co-opt it. We're so quick. Uh, that when uh, we see somebody fall, we talk about them, laugh about them, uh, and hold them up in low regard. Uh, but really, the church is supposed to be a hospital and not a museum. Uh, so I pray that through this book, uh, people will see that people are real, uh, still people. Uh, no matter whether they have 50 million members or 50 members uh, in a storefront, uh, they still have feelings, still have hurt, still have family, uh, and still have a relationship with God. Amen. Pa Pastor Brian, we have a call on the line. I want to take this call. Hold on a moment. All right. Hi, welcome to Lady Charmaine Live. We have a question for Pastor Brian. Yes, I do. Pastor Brian, first of all, I'd like to thank you for telling your story because this is a story that, that needs to be heard. I pastor a church out in California. And my question is, where do pastors go to get the help and with their struggles and with their temptations that they face? Because too many pastors, I feel, are just silent, and nobody's really talking about the major issues that, that we all face. Where, where do we go before we fall? Well, I, I think that one of the things that I found out, Pastor, uh, is that you have to make sure that you don't do covering because it's politically correct. You have to make sure you have covering that's spiritually correct. And it's also very important that whoever is your covering uh, is somebody who has been through something. Uh, because if, if you're under somebody uh, who's under the witness protection program, uh, okay. you will not be tra transparent and honest. When you go through your trial, they'll leave you uh, because uh, they, they don't want to take the risk. And I found out uh, through my own storm that is not, uh, don't pick your covering based off of the name or the glitz or the glamour. Pick your covering based off of the relationship and the covenant uh, to know that it's really a marriage for better or for worse for rich or all for poor. So will you be there if my wife leaves? Will you be there if i got to go to court? <laughs> will you be there okay. if half the membership goes out? And all the more, and we don't like talking about it, will you be there if I can't so well? Uh, <laughs> because I don't hit a financial wall. Uh, and so <laughs> I, I think that we really have to do that. And one of the dangers is in the last 10 years for our generation, we had such a rush of pastors who wanted to become bishops, but they weren't even brothers. You, you mm -hmm. can't be a father uh, if you don't know how to uh, lead, mentor, and develop. And when you look at, regrettably, a lot of the people, and I've I run in that circle, a lot of the people who are, quote, unquote, established and known, the question you're going to have to ask is, where are their sons? Not the people who carry their bags. Not the people who want to ride in a limo with them. Who has duplicated their ministry? Because if the oil flows from the head, and at least I'm on the elbow, I ought to have some reflection of what it is that you've done. Wow. That that right there was so deep. <laughs> Carl, are you still there? Still here. Listen, thank you, Pastor Brian. I'm looking forward to your book. I want to share that in our men's group. I, mean, I just can't wait for it. Thank you for your transparency, your honesty, thank and you. just straight talk. Thank you. Keep praying for me. Okay. Right. And Pastor Brian, before I before yeah. I let you go, um, you said something because I know a lot of people that are going through this right now. You talked about, um, you said the battle that you lost. It was a very expensive battle, and you said yeah. almost to the point of having to file emotional, spiritual, and psychological bankruptcy. So many people yeah. right now feel like they're getting ready to file psychological bankruptcy. What can you say to somebody that's listening right now to help them that feel like they're about to lose everything and even their mind? What can you say right. to them right now, having going through something like that? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to be as honest with you. I went through a, uh, what I want to call, and I don't even know if this is in a psychological book, but I went through a season of functional depression. Uh, where I, I was depressed six days a week, and the only thing I could do was drag myself in the pulpit to preach on Sunday morning. 
uh, but I, I didn't feel like being in church. And we know it as a song, we know it as a cliche, that you have to encourage yourself. Uh, but it, come, it comes a season where you have to remind yourself of where it is and who, who it is that has spoken over your life. When Joseph was in the pit, he had to remind himself that there was still a promise, that he would leave, and that the family would bow down to him. When you're at your lowest point, you have to remember there's still a promise. There's still a destiny. There's still something that you have to function through in your life. Mm, yeah, because sometimes, you know, when you, when you can't think, because I know you said, you know, sometimes you was in a wheelchair, and when somebody's coming out of, you know, which are spiritually, when somebody's coming out of that, and I just wanted to just ask you, when you had to stand up in the pulpit and look at your members, knowing and seeing the disappointment on their faces, how were you able to press through that? I know you said you did David, Psalms 150, you know, in verse right. 6, you know, I let everything that has breath praise the Lord. But how do you still fight through that when you see the disappointment on your members' faces? They may not say anything and they're there because they're supporting right. you and they're loyal, but how did you press past that to still get through that message? What can you say well, to the pastor that's going through that right now? Well, one of the things that had to happen for me, and I can't speak for other pastors, is that that season had to show me that it wasn't about me. God, because what I'm clear about is if I didn't go through it at 36, I would have went through it at 56. Uh, because it, it was in a, a cycle that was being unchecked. Uh, and so you, you have to decrease. And a pastor has to be very guarded to maintain his humility. When you have people who are there to open the door for you, go wash your car for you, go drive you and disagree with the pastor, you begin to get detached from what reality is. And you begin to put yourself in a place where you're above the law. So the people become so uh, disenfranchised when they realize that you're mortal, <laughs> that you're human yeah. because you've been, you've been placed uh, on Superman uh, not knowing... Now, they're not realizing that you still got to go to the phone booth to change because there's a clock camping somewhere. And so how, how do you process and go through all of that is, is very critical uh, to the believer. And so every Sunday that I was looking out at my, my members' faces, I'd stand in the back, shake their hand, seeing them wanting to cry for me, want, mm -hmm. wanting to just hug right. me and not let me go, uh, really uh, helped encourage me to understand that I have a responsibility. And one of the dangers, Lady Charmaine, that I fell into is that preaching became my profession and not my calling. Mm. Uh, it's, it's what mm -hmm. it is that I did, but it was not what it is that I, what I felt. Because when you have a consciousness of Christ, there ought to be some parameters that you put in place to help you understand it is not I, but it's the Christ that lives inside. Ooh, Pastor Brian, I, I can't wait for the book. Do you have a release date for the book? Uh, we have a release date, but we, <laughs> we're wrangling this afternoon trying to get it done. My release date uh, is, is now uh, up in air, but it, <laughs> after you all will please go to the website, jamalbryant.org, and they can get all of the information. And they can pre-order it now on my website, or they can go to amazon.com and pre-order it. Oh, pra praise God. And, again, I just want to thank you so much. I want to thank you for the message that you preached down in Los Angeles of the Merge Summit. It might have just been a 10-minute message, but it was so many nuggets wrapped in there. And when you ministered, duct tape faith. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I've, never, I've never preached that anywhere else, and I, I've been trying to find out if somebody taped it so I can use that again. I don't have any notes or anything, so i got to try to find out where that sermon is. I'm going to tell you why you had to preach that, because that message was for me. If it was not for nobody in that room, I was dispatched that night to that conference, <laughs> just that day. To the, to the, I wasn't even supposed to be going to the reception. You know, and it, you know, Holly told me about it. I was supposed to have been doing a TV show in Chicago. Things got switched around, and I ended up staying at the Biltmore, where the conference ended up being, so I just went downstairs wow. to the conference. And so wow. literally, when you preached that message, it was shortly after I had walked into the room. I said, I can go home now because <laughs> I had been right. at the Biltmore all week, and we were leaving wow. tomorrow or the next day. And so if that message was for nobody else, that was for me. <laughs> and that's probably why you can't find it because the guy gave me all of that, and I would never forget that message because, you know, you feel like sometimes that's all that's holding you up in this life. You just got some duct tape keeping you together. And I tell you, God used you that night with that revelation as you were coming back from your five-star hotel. Leave it in your limo. 
Uh, on that note, Lady Charmaine, thank you so much as we talk about humility. Thank you. You done disrupted thank my God. whole city law. Thank, thank you. But I just wanted to thank you so much. I know you have to go. You have to prepare to preach tonight. But I want to again thank you so much for coming on the show. We would definitely love to have you back, especially when the book is released. If you want to come back on the show, just I always know you're back. welcome. Pardon me? I said I want to come back. Thank you so much. Oh, you are so welcome. And again, thank you so much. Tell Miss Nicole Kirby. And I'm going to tell you, I was talking to a young lady. I just want to speak on uh, Miss Nicole. You have to watch who you have around you. She is a wonderful woman that represents you. I'm talking about from beginning to end. And I tell anybody, watch the people that you have that represent you because they, they're the people that's going before you. And so she let me know the kind of spirit that you would have just because of the person you have working for you. So I just want to say thank you so much and thank you to Miss Nicole for her spirit and representing you well. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm, I'm going to have you back on the show. And again, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.